Oh boy. Matthew Hamilton for a little hammer time. Hammer! Oh, we don't have a girl. <laughs> Am I drunk? <laughs> what did you think? Can we please yeah. let's run that back? Okay, and it's time for <laughs> hammer time. <laughs> that is something. <laughs> okay, I love it. I love it. Do you have any notes on this animation? Yeah. This has been a, a behind the scenes siege for, for, you know, that I never fully will tell you about as Jerry Maguire would say. What do you think of it? No notes, I, I think it's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go! Okay, I, like I think I think I like the lightning strike. I don't think it needs music. We're into it. Can you tell that I'm drunk? Yeah. By my eyes? Oh, you yeah. Can, Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, it's time for hammer time. <laughs> We're going to do it one last time. Okay, it's time for Matthew Hamilton. It's here for hammer time. <laughs> All right, hammer. Let's do this. The Packers, here's the deal. You and I have been sort of putting this out there into the world many much and many, and, and the Peter Bukowskis, they see it, and you know, the, the people are seeing it, but not everybody's paying attention to what's going on with the Packers and this decision that they have to make on Jordan Love. Do they extend him right now off of one season as a starter? Do they let him play out this year? What should his side want? So I've made the case for why Goody should be really setting everything on his desk aside and focusing on getting the contract to now. Based on the tape, though, is there enough to justify Jordan and a long-term deal? Absolutely there is. I think Jordan not only showed a mastery of the Matt LaFleur offense as the season wore on last year, but the ability to make big plays when things didn't go according to plan. I think he and LaFleur are the perfect fit together, and he's only going to continue to get better, too. Let's get into some of this tape. We'll see first the mastery of that LaFleur system that I'm talking about. Love this play design. Jaden Reed coming in motion. You got a post route, a corner route, and then Reed is going to wrap around from that motion and run a dig. You got play action here as well. It's able to freeze the middle of that Bears defense, as you see right there, and create a void in the middle. And you see here, Brisker's vacating that side of the field. It tells Jordan Love that that void is going to be there. Look at the anticipation, the timing. This is perfectly on time, gets it to read in the middle of the field, lets him get busy after the catch. That is perfectly executed from Love. And then when things don't go according to plan, as we talked about, here he is in that playoff game against the Cowboys. Romeo Dobbs is going to be running a dig here. Love reads this, sees that he's going to be open, but Michael Parsons is pushing the pocket back into his face. He's going to have to move, extend the play, and he does it. He's also going to get a free rusher in his face as he gets ready to deliver his ball. He can't step into it at all. This is all core strength, arm talent. And look at this. He just uncorks this without being able to step into it. And that. once again, is able to find that void in the middle of the defense, oh. drop it in perfectly. He just got more and more comfortable as the season went along. And I think he's only going to continue to grow. And I'm looking at the FanDuel Sportsbook MVP odds right now. He's sixth there at plus 1,400, right behind Lamar Jackson. And I don't think it's crazy to think that he's going to be in that MVP conversation. He's got a tremendous opportunity in that NFC North. If the Packers are able to unseat the Lions and he builds on what he did to end last season, he's going to be in that MVP conversation. I don't think it's crazy. I'd like to hear that they're all hanging out, him and the young receivers. I'd like the news story of like they're golfing or at the beach running routes or they're you know, doing what Brady did all those years, what some of these, these great uh, quarterbacks do and taking, you know, going fishing, whatever you want to say. Like, I want to see that chemistry further develop. I think that's what gives me the confidence in this a lot. You know, a lot of people, you know, you are like geeked out by 18 touchdowns to one interception. I'm not saying that I'm not, and that's over the second half of the season, of course. But that there's like, there is a, is that sustainable question? How do you do it? And then there is this looming Aaron Jones, can they do it without him? That needs to be proved. So I, I, I'm in on the Packers, of course, but there are questions. Good value, though, on the sports book, like you're saying. Yeah, and it's a valid question with Aaron Jones. His health was a big part of their mm -hmm. success over the second half. Once he finally got healthy and they got the run game going, it really helped Jordan. Uh, hopefully they continue can continue that with Josh Jacobs now. Yeah, I want to see like what these OTA, but I want like extracurriculars. I want yeah. things, Oval Office, I don't know, but I just what, saw, you know, whatever. I just All saw right. him playing basketball with Chase Daniel. That oh. was the only extracurricular I've seen so far. <laughs> there we go.